money on your end or what? <laughs> oh, no, not at all. <laughs> Welcome, funny. everybody, to the Friday Hangout. This is the Friday Hangout where we talk to people who are experts in the industry and all kinds of things, social media and digital marketing and PR. Uh, this week, we've got a fabulous guest, John Hayden. And before we get to John and talking about him, I'd like to introduce the fabulous and scintillating Steve Farnsworth. Hey. Hey. And I can't even think of any great superlatives right now for Adam Elway because he's you, so you, fabulous. And the, and the other guy. And the <laughs> other guy. I used them all up, Adam. You I'm used them Steve. over on Steve, both of them. He got two, I got zero. <laughs> but he's secret sushi, so, you know, he's he's got a lot Ooh. going on there. The secret and the sushi, Adam Helway. Way, right there we go this week we're all about Facebook and we brought John on because he is the <clears throat> my Facebook go-to guy if anybody mm -hmm. in nonprofits or for-profits want to know about Facebook you got to talk to John so John why don't you tell us a little bit about you and how who you, the hell you are fabulous mm -hmm. who am I yeah well um geez who am I well I'm a dad Yay. I'm a songwriter. I love writing music. I have a lot of music. All right, on so we're going to be cutting short today and moving right along to our next. <laughs> <time>. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so I'm a dad. Um, I write music, and I also am fortunate enough to have my own business where I work with nonprofits. Okay, so uh, most of my career, I've been in the in the marketing sales world for about maybe 15 years. Most of, in fact, all of it was on the on the uh, for profit side, and I started working with nonprofits about seven years ago found that working with them um, actually helped me sleep at night and then I just continued. You know, I continued. I love the work that I do. Um, I, the way I describe the work that I do is, is this. Um, I resuscitate missions and I inject them into the internet. That's what I do. Because I find that dirty. the work, the work, it is very dirty. <laughs> <laughs> mouth to mouth, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Um, no, but uh, that's basically what I do, and and you know, I'm sure you guys have worked with businesses where you know you find out that the real problem is that they don't know what their story is. Yeah. You know, they, they they don't really have an effective way to tell it. So that is yeah. a lot of the work that I do. You know, so yeah. that's that's me. And and I wrote Facebook marketing for dummies, and I, I'm working on another book that I'm calling Facebook farming. It's going to have a little. A huge subtitle, actually, uh, but the the idea is and that Facebook you know, farming. You said it's all about farm bill. Yeah, I was, I was about to say. It's all about farm bill. I know, I know. That's why I said it's a working title because it definitely has problems, right? <laughs> no, but, no, but it's like the the idea is that um, it's it's a it's a niche book. It's only for nonprofits. It's all about how to integrate Facebook into a fundraising strategy, an existing one, right? Because that's something that nonprofits struggle with, and they they the claim is. You can't raise money with Facebook. You know, people just don't donate on Facebook. And the problem is they're looking at it from a transactional perspective. You know, the money, pulling out the credit card, making a donation, and that's a huge misunderstanding. You know, Facebook, Twitter, social media stinks for fundraising or, or collecting donations. Of course it does. You know, but it's the, the same. It, it's the same when it comes to commerce. The same misconception mm -hmm. uh, about what Facebook's job is in that sort of chain of events. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook is not a place where you go and uh, actually, go perusing around a catalog and buying stuff right directly on there. At least, you know, for the most part, it, it isn't. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could cruise around and look at ex-girlfriends, but that's another issue. That's a catalog <laughs> of ex-girlfriends. Is what really what Facebook Not you, is. Steve. <laughs> Steve is done. Stop this. typing, Steve. Stop <laughs> typing. <laughs> I'm not typing. Well, I'm searching. John, there have been a lot of changes with Facebook lately, um, and one of the ones that I thought was really impactful for nonprofits as well as uh, for profits were the changes to the promotion rules. Can yeah, we so talk yeah. a little oh, bit yeah. about that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, in my world, the nonprofit world, a lot of news comes out about Facebook, and of course, most nonprofits just miss it or whatever, they don't really keep up. So I don't know. If if there's, I haven't heard any examples where a nonprofit's actually using the new promotion rules, you know, actively using it. I've seen a couple of little things out there, but it seems like people are just experimenting now. And the rules, as you guys already know, the rules are anything goes. Well, <laughs> basically, <not laughs> with, quite, with, with a few little caveats. Yeah, you know, you can't use liking a page as a condition of entry. 
Um, you can use a like, comment, and share, though, on an update, which I think is pretty huge, right? So yeah. that lowers the barrier to entry um, for the participant and also the organization or the company that wants to do some type of sweepstakes on Facebook. We, they, don't, they don't necessarily need a custom tab. Right. Yeah. However, they don't need the technical expertise or, or, or some technical resource to help them in creating that custom tab. I mean, there's a lot of easy and turnkey sort of solutions out there in order to help do that. But in, still, for the most part, it's not something that's always within the wheelhouse of those individuals. Yeah. Not at all. You're right. You're yeah, exactly I, right. Yeah, in part, you know, this the same, you know, even though messaging wasn't an option in the old pages, uh, liking comments or mm. putting a post up was... Uh, Common thing, you know, like hey, people, you know, caption contests and those kinds of things. They would do contests around that, and then Facebook did a rule change says you can't do those kinds of activities anymore. Which because those are really common, like hey, we're going to give the person who, you know, if you want to like a chance of this, add a caption or whatever. That was mm -hmm. technically in violation, or that was done, and then it was in violation of the rules. Facebook changed mm -hmm. it. And what happened mm -hmm. after that, which is interesting, is then they started charging for promoting posts from pages. Mm -hmm. yep. And now they're relaxing the rule because they don't care because they control the access to the, to the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I th Facebook is really easy to understand how it works if you understand that Facebook is basically a public company trying to make money. Like a lot of little changes and all that, it really starts to make sense when you understand the, the overall incentive that they have. You know, So, um, yeah, edge rank included. Well, yeah, and, that, and that's a that's a big thing that we we I mean I I'm personally most looking forward to talking about today, which is you know edge rank um, data that I've seen in the past and probably a year or two ago um, was talking about, for instance, you know images and videos they were favored, and then of course there were other little factors in there for the most part, but like mm -hmm. those types of, of of content in comparison to just standard text post content mm -hmm. um, would would be sort of favored a little bit in edge rank. There was a lot of little things they talked about with sort of minimal measuring measurement points, uh, four, five, mm. six measurement points. You know, I didn't get to read the article yet, but there's a number of articles that have come out in the last couple months that have been stating that, you know, old edge rank is gone uh, mm. or, or morphed in a huge way. And that I, it, it reminds me sort of of what Foursquare did where Initially, when you interacted with a location on Foursquare, you checked in on, on that location, and that was about it. Or maybe you would share a photo at that location. But now Foursquare is using you know, how many of your friends have checked in. Uh, mm -hmm. It's got the little like button on it. So it's taking all of these data points now that it finally mm -hmm. has, because it didn't have it before, and, and adding it together to give you this algorithm of, of recommending things to you. And now mm -hmm. Facebook has... You know, arguably hundreds, hundreds of times more data points than uh, Foursquare does for locations around people who are interacting with content and posts, and who who it is that's sharing those posts. Um, do you know anything about how Edge Rank has sort of evolved over the last you know couple years? Um, I mean, I've been keeping up with um, all, everything that I read. You know, so I read a lot of all the latest news and and particularly blogs from Facebook. Um, and also the research, right? And here's the interesting thing about research. Whenever it comes out, like HubSpot will come out and say, hey, we have this huge thing, um, and, which is good. It's very useful research, but I think from a business's perspective, from a nonprofit's perspective, it's good to take any sort of uh, big data, you know, infograph with a grain of salt because though that data is based on a thousand or so Facebook pages that aren't yours, Right, it might be a mix of industries, might be a whole bunch of things. So the day, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt there, and understand that your community, your Facebook page community, is going to be different. They're going to respond to different things. You know, for example, um, I've had a tremendous amount of success with uh, text updates, and what's great about text updates is that, oh, in general, and I've read a lot about this from different blog posts and studies and whatnot, it seems that now text updates are getting more reach than a photo. And, and that's okay. exactly what I've been hearing over over the last couple months as well, which is completely opposite to the old understanding of how yeah. Edge Rank worked. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, what they're adjusting Edge Rank. See, Edge Rank is, and by the way, it's not gone. Okay, I think what what it is is that Facebook is probably using that. They're not really using that word publicly anymore. Because I don't know why, but I, I'm not seeing them saying the word edge rank. But clearly, there is an algorithm, you know. So for me, 
Edge Rank is just that that machine, that algorithm, whatever it is. I'll call it Edge Rank forever, but you could also call it the Facebook algorithm. So it's it's not dead. Yeah. yeah well. Said, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, I was going to say. So originally, when Facebook back like in 2006, when they first were were um, you know, using an algorithm, they used basically had some. You know, they, they considered kind of turning dials, and they were like doing some mm -hmm. basic, some basic kinds of simple weighting. And then edge mm -hmm. rank was a little more uh, sophisticated algorithm, which took into the you know the uh, affinity, which is how close you were to somebody, and that stuff, mm -hmm. and time decay, and weight. Mm -hmm. And those were kind of that was edge rank. So about two and a half years ago, the guy uh, Lars Backstrom, who's the uh, engineering guy for news, the news feed, the people who do the, the algorithm stuff, said so about two and a half years ago they stopped using. Uh, edge rank, and for them the change was they moved to a machine learning model. So mm -hmm. it goes from having a, a, a dozen or whatever kinds of combinations to like about a, he guesses about a hundred thousand different data points, and mm -hmm. it has to do with edge rank. So that's I mean yeah. with, excuse me with with, uh, with that automation uh, with the automation. So so it's it's yeah. just uh, the, the bad news is 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 it's is so complex now that it's hard to describe mm -hmm. and even kind of get to the the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. But you know what you yeah. guys are talking about in terms of 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 seeing certain things, you know, like when, I, when you read into kind of what uh, they talk about now, is they they show if you tend to produce uh, uh, links out, and people mm -hmm. tend to look at links on their own, then mm -hmm. they will tend to see those updates more from that page. And mm -hmm. likewise, if people tend to like <clears throat> photos on their own, and you put out a lot more photos, then people. Mm -hmm. Will tend, you know, those will tend to see it, and so those are some of the mm. basic things. People who tend to do things tend to see those things from pages that tend to do the same things that they yep. interact with. It's, it's yeah. fundamentally how it works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and it's really and, and, and the, the um, misunderstanding, I think, is that this algorithm is only about the content that pages publish, right? But actually, that algorithm is about everything. It affects everything. So you and your friends, it affects that. But it also, like you said, Steve, it actually considers a person's past behavior. You know, I like photos. I don't care what the photos are from. You know, I, that's my behavior. I tend to like photos and share photos. I'm a sharing freak, okay? <laughs> Obviously, that's going to be beneficial to Facebook to, to consider that information in the overall um, distribution of content, right? You know, if you want to... Steve wanna, jumped off. Yeah, he, he bounced out He's on done. accident there. Um, you know what I would... And Janet, sorry, but in if... if, no, no. if did you have a question, Janet? Nope, go ahead. Okay, so John, I, you know, I think based on like just like you were saying, there was a couple. You said a little bit earlier, um, it's it's one thing to look at a sample size of of you know of, of pages and whether that's mm -hmm. ten or a thousand or whatever. It, does that include you? And and are you also including your own? Just looking at your mm -hmm. own insights, for instance, doing mm -hmm. some experimentation, seeing how your particular audience reacts. And then Steve and what he mentioned was essentially like, yeah, because ultimately. Uh, it's how your audience specifically reacts that Facebook is going to sort of read and detect and chew on mm. and then optimize for. And this to me is very um, much in parallel with how SEO is working right now, specifically mm. Google. Um, Google previously was page rank. It was one specific page and it was a couple very sort of hard uh, points within that page that it was ranking off of. Uh, and if you take a look at sort of uh, some more updated information that's out there and, and, and see there was a really interesting post and I talked about it a lot, um, mm. actually maybe not on this show but on, on something else that I was doing, uh, it was from Moz, uh, from Moz Analytics known as Mon SEO, uh, Moz SEO in the past and they had this great article that just talked about how this is the current state of SEO and they showed the multitude of data points that uh, SEO you know uh, considered that that Google itself was considering for ranking and it wasn't as much about one particular page it came from more of this sort of for one more user centric mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so previously it was you know make the bots happy make the bots happy and that's what would help you rank and previously that was that was it we could just go ahead and say well if we post this sort of content no matter what the quality of content is it'll mm -hmm. likely be seen more on Facebook but that's not mm -hmm. the case anymore as Steve was alluding to which is it's about your relationship with that individual and Facebook's ability to learn mm -hmm. about that data and about that interaction with that one-to-one -one relationship that you have with that person and your page and then mm -hmm. optimize accordingly and if you're so ultimately if you're doing what's best for your users and your audience, mm -hmm. you will continue mm -hmm. 
to see that be uh, optimized and shown because Facebook, as well as anybody else, simply wants more people to spend more time, and the only way to make that happen is to basically make users happy with mm -hmm. what's being shown in front of them rather than show them crap. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, what we've I, been saying forever, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, and the other thing, I think that that's a great analogy. I, Beckstrom, Lars Beckstrom, the newsfeed guy, uh, even said, he says, you know, the way to think about edge rank and what we're doing now between the, you know, edge rank, which is wasn't machine learning versus what they're doing now, which is machine learning. So it's, it is very different. Mm -hmm. um, the, the difference was is like looking at Alta Vista versus Google. And all mm -hmm. the things you just said, you know, the personalization, the, the behaviors, the localization, those kinds of things really play into the, the new algorithm. Hey, John, I was hoping that maybe you could talk about story mm -hmm. bumping a little bit. Talk about, that's one of the big changes. Okay, so that's a new, tell me about story bumping. I, I don't know what that is. I, I don't know what oh. that means. Well, yeah, so yeah. I mean, maybe I call it something I, else. I, I am yeah. so well, so. Facebook announced two new additions to uh, what they're doing, and story bumping basically. They, so part of the problem, like, and, and this is not so part of the problem with systems that that are like that are uh, that work like an algorithm and this machine learning stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. When you work with complex systems, which a news feed is because of all the different data points, is you mm -hmm. get into these feedback loops, and it's it's mm -hmm. always been a problem. So. You need to have correction stuff. So they've added two things. So story bumping, because the, the decay, you know, the affinity, weight, and decay stuff, which mm -hmm. is the old edge rank, still is is a. Well, those they're going to refresh your newsfeed. Right, but now refresh. what they do is, is is the decay would normally cause everything to uh, include the initial uh, bump of stuff, and then it would die, right? So yep, what story totally bumping die. allows is that if it gets a little more traction again in the future. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't. It, it counts the initial um, uh, inertia. Brings it back to the surface. Mm -hmm. Brings it back to the surface, and so this helps yeah. break that. You know, yeah. Thank you. Whole mm -hmm. words. I work with words mm -hmm. and stuff in my life. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and so, so that helps. So it gives stories a second chance, basically. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, is, and it's, it's a different side of the same coin, which is going back to user behavior. They have a last actor. Uh, okay. Last actor is. Uh, do you want you want to talk about that, John? Well, uh, remind me, because I mean, I've read about this stuff. No, seriously. I, I'm sorry. See, here, I'm so sorry. The, no, this is this is great. Actually, you know more than I do about edge rank. It's like, um, no, but so when sorry. I look at when I look at edge rank, and I look at because I know all you know, I know a lot of the factors that go into into play here, right? So these for, these the last actor and the story coming up, um, the story bump. I mean, I re I read about those a couple weeks ago. Okay. And now, when I so tell me so the way that I look at all of this stuff, whether it's a human being or machine or whatever, I always go back to Facebook's fundamental goals, which is to basically serve up as many impressions as possible. Okay, that's basically it. Um, and if they have um, so, for example, in my you know opinion, um, <clears throat> this hasn't been verified by the way, but I think the reason why text updates get more reach is because they're generally smaller. They take up less real estate than a photo. So it, there's more room for that sort of content. There's many more pieces of content within a newsfeed that a user can interact with. Okay? That's, you know, that's my opinion. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with that or I, not. I, I think that that's, that's true, but I also think the other thing that plays into it is, is it's, clear Variety. From, 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 it's clear from Facebook's actions and things that they've said publicly is they, they really are trying to... to Limit other platform intrusions into the Facebook thing. So if you put a link, mm -hmm. if you put a link in a story, it's just and they intentionally limit that. But original content updates, mm -hmm. they I think they favor they they already favor based on the way they do because they don't want people leaving the platform. That was part yeah. of the whole embedding. And again, that is YouTube. part. Yeah. So again, that that's another example of how the business goal is going to influence how edge rank is kind of playing out, right? Yeah. Yeah, and also news. News feed insertions with the advertising and the contextual kind of mm -hmm. retargeting stuff. Yep. Okay, that's driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, let me just yeah. actually just finish. But I mean, I, I like retargeting a little bit because at least the person's been to a website, you know, mm -hmm. and then they're going to see the ad. Like that seems a little bit that that seems to make sense to me. Yeah. You know. I actually so, wanted to wanted to while we're on the topic of images. Two shares today, and I'm going to bring one of them in right away because mm. it's relevant to this. Um, mm. On convince and convert, uh, Mark Kelly did some research on whether pictures of people increased engagement, and they actually did um, 
some stats and it showed that basically it's almost exactly the same whether there's a person in the photo and that was their their hypothesis is that we mm. respond more to people mm -hmm. and basically mm. it didn't matter if it there really was matter, a huh? person in it or not I mean yeah, there was yeah. like maybe a two percent more mm. if there was a person in the image mm. and I thought that was pretty fascinating. Wow that is interesting yeah it's way Just, different than what we've said yeah. Just because I didn't uh, answer uh, about the last actor oh, thing. Is it all, mm. No, no, it's okay. I, didn't want, I just yep. didn't want to leave yep. that open. Mm. The last actor says, other than looking at your, your total historical performance and what you like as a factor, they also look at the factor of your, your last 50 action, interactions yeah. and use that to help format. So, mm. so the good news mm. for marketers is just because somebody was a certain way or you have a mm. certain kind of re relationship with your current audience, if you realize you need to mm. change it, Mm. It's going to be a little easier to kind of change how you're interacting with your audience. So that's the yep. good news of that. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, you're right. And and all of these things really point to, um, and, and all these new changes in edge rank, they don't really, in a sense, they don't really need, they don't mean anything new for the marketer. They really don't mean anything new. Okay? If you're doing your job, if you're um, creating really compelling content and you're nurturing your community, you're in touch with them, you're... You respond quickly. You do all the things right. Then that is going to be what is. That's what's going to be rewarded, right? Because if you're basically Facebook's job is this. It's twofold. It's kind of like Google. Look, we need to. Google is saying we need to pre present the best search results for this person right now. Okay, that that's their whole business. Okay, Facebook is we need to. Um, have people find useful content based on their relationships, right? And help develop and make those relationships more meaningful and make it easier for people and be useful. So then they're gonna, going to do everything they can to reach that goal, right? So it's the same thing. And, so I don't, and, I mean, for marketers, has anything, does edge rank really, like understanding edge rank I think is good because then you actually understand, oh, if I get more likes, comments, and shares, as an example, then that person or those people will, will be more likely to see my content in the future. Okay, mm -hmm. so that that's one example of why it's important to understand edge rank. Um, and there are a few other things to understand about edge rank, like time decay. You want to publish something when your Facebook fans are actually there and not like middle of the night. Those types of things. So those kind of things are useful. But the new changes about last actor and the um, the story bumping. I mean, that's all great, but um, if the business is just focusing on creating a really unique, compelling experience on Facebook with their content first and with their relationship with their community first, then everything else is going to work. I don't know. May, am I living in an ideal world? No, no. I, I mean, I, I think, I think wow. as, I, as I hear what you're saying, John, and, and, and also, what, again, back to what Steve was, was covering in, in order to sort of summarize it for everybody, who, because I think we've gone in a technical direction with a lot of the yeah. stuff that we've yeah. talked about. The bottom line is, is, it, is that Facebook is doing more uh, to help the average business and company do what they can. In, in, in the beginning it was rigid and now it's mm -hmm. much more flexible and adaptive mm -hmm. to what you're doing. And so the bottom line is is keep doing what's best for your audience and yep. don't worry about the algorithm because the algorithm is trying to work better for yeah. you. Boom. Yeah, and absolutely. And That's it. Beat the algorithm, so... Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is good to understand like the basics of it, but to kind of, like you said, Adam, like to worry about it or fret about it, that's not, you, you know, that business is norm. I don't think a lot of businesses have time to worry about that or read about it. You know? Yeah, and they shouldn't worry about it now. I mean, in the past, mm -hmm. it was a little bit more difficult. But this, I mean, it, it, as we're talking, I see all these parallels to SEO, mm -hmm. and SEO is getting to a point where it's just pay attention yeah. to the user and do what's best for them because ultimately yep. that's where Facebook's money goes is, yeah. is towards that and Google's money goes towards that and that's where we all want to go is, mm. is making those users happy so I think that's mm. the main thing we need to uh, to worry about mm. so what's next Janet so this yeah uh, John I know that you've got to rush out the door uh, it was really great one more question I can a I can answer one more question if you want um, <laughs> I, I have that, I have we're John, we're share. Share. We I could do a do-over. Do we could do a do-over because I, I actually do failed over. like two questions. I didn't know. So no, no. I want to. I want to know, John. What is <laughs> a, a bad? What host. is your? What is your favorite example of of a business or an organization that's just using Facebook in an awesome way so that our listeners can go out and go check out that page? Well, I follow mostly nonprofits, but um, 
<clears throat> the National Wildlife Federation has an excellent example of a, a, a Facebook page policy. Basically, like it, within their about tab, here's what our community is about, and if you do any of the stuff, we're going to ban you as a user. That's a great tool to have for any business or any nonprofit because you're setting it up, you're setting up the expectation, you're forced by way of creating that policy, you're forced to actually have a discussion. What is the purpose of our page? What kind of vibe do we want to create here? And what's the line? Where's the line? What do people have to do for us to actually, you know, delete someone or whatever? Do you, do you have one more? Yeah. Uh, yes, one more. Best. So uh, the other one I love, so that's a big organization, more mid-sized organization, is Best Friends Animal Society. So it's a huge animal shelter out in Utah. Uh, maybe you're familiar with them, but they just published the best updates, and they actually had a, a great um, campaign where they found out that a dog who was um, sick uh, actually had cancer. You know, someone adopted this dog, and then maybe a year or two later, this dog got cancer. They did this whole campaign about um, sending a card through Facebook, with this Facebook app thing, sending a card to this dog. And they use that as a <laughs> tremendous way to engage their fans and acquire emails. So it was like a twofer, oh, right? They got smart. engagement, they got page likes, they got emails. It was a huge, huge success. What's Those the guys were pretty smart. What, what, what was the web, the web page? Oh, it, it's Best Friends Animal Society. And on Twitter, it's just B-F-A-S. B-F-A-S, yeah. Just to get a pitch in there for, for John and some of the things that he does, he has a Pinterest page that has great mm -hmm. calls to action on it on Facebook mm. and it's really fascinating and it's a really good thing that any profit or nonprofit business could use. Um, John, if you um, share that URL, maybe we can uh, uh, mm -hmm. just just paste it in the chat and I'll make sure it gets on, the, on the page. On the show this notes. is kind of the time that we move to shares. He says John's going to John's going to take okay. off, right? Um, I was going to close with If that. I'm not done, then I'm not, I'm not leaving until <laughs> it's, I'm told it's okay. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. This is the time already the failed all where the we move on to shares. And before we do that, John, mm -hmm. uh, yep. tell everybody where they can find you and when your new book's going to come out. Facebook Marketing for Dummies came out in June, right? So that one's already out. Mm -hmm. That's the fourth edition. It's the latest one. And then the, the other one for nonprofits, that one's probably going to be January. I'm, oh, uh, but I don't have a solid date on that. That's now. Okay, because we... Great. I'm basically finishing writing it, and I have to, um, you know, it has to be edited and all this fun stuff. You know? Cool. So, look forward to having you come back to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to put this link right in here. And that is it. You guys have been great, and I really appreciate all the time. Thank and you I, so much I, for I, I hope that this was useful. I really do. I hope this was useful. It was, yeah, and you're welcome to stick it. around for a, as long as you possibly can. If we see you, bump, you know, jump out of the, the hangout, then we, we know why. Yeah, well, I got to pick up my son in 15 minutes at school. <laughs> he can so, wait. He can wait. Yeah. It's all right. It's he's like standing it's on the sidewalk. <laughs> Dad, he's like nine years old. The police are with him. <laughs> I was hanging out in bars when I was nine. Oh, he's fine. There you go. That'll be fine. All right, awesome. It was great. All right, guys, listen. Thanks. Have a great weekend, okay? Thank you, John. Thanks, John. You Take care. All right. Okay, bye. Steve, I know you got to share. Yeah, well, actually, it was it was an interesting thing done by uh, Edge Rank che Checker. They uh, did a uh, a test on the hashtags to see if it increased uh, virality. Virality. Whoa! Virality. Whoa! I know. Really? Did it work? Wrong. For you, Steve? Well, I, I guess. <laughs> did it work? Did it increase your virility? <laughs> well, I know it did mine, Ooh, but but it, what, what they found is that you know there's all this stuff about. Uh, Hashtags and what it was going to do on you know, Facebook, mm -hmm. and it showed that it was a, a it showed that Facebook was going after other platforms. So when they tested about thirty, I forgot, it was like five hundred pages, thirty-five thousand updates, six thousand of those had hashtags, and they found that the hashtags did nothing, and it actually had a drop <laughs> in usage for some reason. Wow. And, and they they speculated. We'll share the article, but uh, the folks who covered this speculated about why that was, but no one really knows. It's just that, that hashtags don't seem to be doing anything. Now, for anybody who hasn't used the hashtags, basically it has to happen. If you use a hashtag in uh, on the page and you can click on it, it will take you to then another page. The idea is then you'll see other other uh, pages that are using similar hashtags and find new content or content from pages you're not currently subscribed to. And either people aren't clicking on it or 
Do they you don't care. think that that's because a lot of people on Facebook don't really know how to use hashtags? I see the silliest hashtags that make no sense to anybody but the person that's writing it, it's, them. It's not, it's not I, I, common practice yet for people. Yeah. I, I think it may be a combination of those things. And I think that you know, they cite in the article just stupid hashtags. And also that kind of the Instagram hashtagging things to death. This is being really possible culprits for why it's not being adopted, not being used. But yeah, uh, people need to pick hashtags that are more global. And I, there's this really bizarre drive, even in, in uh, Twitter, to create these hashtags that have absolutely no connection with the real world that nobody would ever look for. And it's like, why even bother? Well, Speaking do you do hashtags, you? Hashtags. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, do you even see hashtags being? I mean, we are all sort of more heavy. You know, we we have larger sort of networks on Facebook maybe than uh, the average individual, uh, which is not necessarily saying it's a good thing in that case. But um, but but I mean, in, in the in, we have a lot of early adopters in in those networks, but we don't mm -hmm. see hashtags. I don't see hashtags being used that much on Facebook right now. Um, and I think what you were alluding to, Steve, is you know, like on Twitter, people tend to use hashtags that are relevant, but they also use hashtags as sort of like a goofy cultural reference to things. And that hashtag is just sort of adding yeah. context to what they're doing, which is yeah. not what it's specifically meant to do, right. uh, and therefore would really not make sense on Facebook as well. Well, and hashtags were organic on Twitter. It wasn't something that Twitter promoted, to my knowledge. It was always something. It was more of a Something that people did within the within the platform itself, and it grew and became Correct. a standard part of it. Hey, you guys, let me jump in because we have a question from a viewer. Um, Yay! Dave Waltman wants to know how much negative post commenting censorship should a business on Facebook engage in? So, so how much should you censor negative comments on a Facebook page? I, you know, I think that John's thing about you know what are your guidelines? You should have a and your guidelines can be basically you should leave anything up that's not offensive, which is a pretty broad term. So uh, depending on swear words, uh, you know, hate speak, those kinds of things, mm -hmm. violence, um, things of inappropriate sexual content, anything like that. I think you have a pretty clear, especially if you state it. But even if you didn't, I think you have a pretty clear uh, permission to delete stuff like that. Beyond that, if you don't like it. That's, I mean, if it's a comment you just don't like, I don't think you should delete it. I think that's what, where people really go off the rails and get in deep trouble. I don't know what yeah, you guys think. I, uh, I totally agree with that. Partly because to me, any kind of negative comment is an opportunity to engage that user and really say, okay, we hear your problem, we're going to solve it, and, and really show people that you're listening and you do something as opposed to you're just broadcasting and you really don't care. Well, you may, and I agree totally with both of you, you may, it may not even be that you can solve it, to be honest, but I think you also, you know, part of the reason that social media uh, it has, has some, some oomph to it is, um, is the relationship that you have with the people that you that are engaging with you and if you have somebody engaging and saying something potentially negative and you're found to have removed it and removed them frequently from your page um, what happens is people notice after a while and even the people who aren't posting the negative stuff notice that there is some quote unquote you know um, censorship going on and it starts to break the authenticity the, the uh, authenticity of the relationship that you have with them because now it feels a little bit like a dictatorship government that now wants to basically censor everything that you're saying on TV right or in free freedom of speech or whatever um, so I mean I'm not saying I'm not saying that everything in a wholesale should be allowed I agree with you guys because it's about you know there's a line that need that, that can be crossed um, but taking advantage of those opportunities and making sure that people understand that it's okay to let you know how they feel and that y you guys, um, hopefully if you're doing your job, should be able to mitigate that in the future if you listen to what they're saying. Yeah, I agree. And, and it's, you know, there are instances where, you know, I work with some financial services company and there are places that, you know, people are posting comments because it's a scam. Um, you know, and they're they're trying to work the system to get something, and it, those kind of things I would delete. And sometimes, you know, you got to yeah. turn off commenting because it gets so crazy. Yeah. But in general, keep the comments. Yeah, abso absolutely. I, I think that absolutely. Janet, who's that question? The next question from? Uh, we also have a second question from Dave, uh, which is oh, Google keep Plus them coming, seems Dave. to auto-generate hashtags. Do we think Facebook does that? To my knowledge, no. 
Okay. Which is which is which is probably unfortunate. Which is nice is it, it does. I think it helps standardize it. I mean, but but you know, actually, just to sort of riff on that, I think if you do a, a graph search, because during the Apple announcement this week, I actually decided to open up the Open Graph search oh. um, for the Apple hashtag to test it out, at, because I normally do that on Twitter, mm -hmm. and so uh, I think at the top it actually shows a number of related hashtags mm -hmm. uh, on top of the search. Versus You're when right, you go to when You're so right. when but versus when you go to Google Plus, every piece of content has related hashtags associated mm -hmm. with it. So whether it's a search or not, there is a little area where it has a couple related hashtags to what you're looking at. But in the in the in the graph search, I believe at the top it actually says here are a few related, you know, iPhone versus Apple versus iPhone 5s or 5c, which was some uh, the other ones that people were using. Right. So. Uh, um, but yeah, no, good question making us think there, Dave, and, and feel free to please keep, uh, you know, keep those coming. We appreciate that. Um, I have a share. Go, it's, if, if we have Go. time. Um, uh, so this is sort of flew under the radar for most people with this Apple announcement because they were so busy trying to decide, you know, if the gold champagne version of the camera was cool or the plastic <laughs> version was cool or whatever. But... Um, part of the new APIs and, and, and hooks that they've offered in the, the operating system uh, has a, a system, well there's two things that, that I think are really important for marketers and are going to sort of set the tone for this for the future here because currently it's only the iPhone 5S that has this capability, but the iPhone comes with not only its regular processor, but it also now has something called the M7 motion coprocessor and what that is is it is a processor now specifically dedicated to location and and movement in the oh, phone wow. so that it can communicate passively with devices that are they, they said about fitness but really it, it's more than that because when you yeah. pair that with something in their API called um, uh, called iBeacons what it is is iBeacons allows you to take like a uh, that you can create a beacon and a beacon is something you would create programmatically on a device or through software someplace else. It's a ping of some kind that's going exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And and what can happen is because now you have this very you know GPS is big. It's it's maps. It's hundred. It's it's uh, thousands of feet uh, and miles and stuff is being calculated there. And you know when you get really down to the to the uh, where you are, it can't be very precise. Uh, at least you know sort of general GPS on smartphones. Now the motion coprocessor can actually get you in a building really, really precisely, like in front of a painting, for instance. Okay, wow. and and you can have a you can have a beacon on that painting <sighs> that now interacts with you. Now, and the and the reason I, I say painting is because I actually saw a demo of this from Apple on YouTube. There's a lot of if you look for iBeacon demo or how iBeacon is used, you'll see it online. Um, but this can be applied to businesses now, where you yeah. walk into an actual business and actually have interactions happening around the store based on beacons you have. So the, be the, yeah. the, the primary differences between GPS and iBeacons is two things as according to Apple. One, it's accuracy, so it's super, yeah. much more accurate. And, super and, granular. Yeah, and two, it can actually also tell signal strength so it knows if you're closer or farther to a specific beacon itself. Um, and be able to to provide feedback to you on this. So wow. this is available in the APIs yeah. right now. The new iPhone 5S supports this, so you'll start to see this roll out. There's a lot of iPhones that are in people's hands that are, are not going to be supported because it doesn't have the M7 coprocessor, the motion coprocessor. But um, if you've ever heard of NFC and near-field communication yeah. and payment in that regard, that essentially people are saying that Apple, who is not done anything with NFC over the last couple of years and who they've been waiting to do that is essentially trying to one-up it by doing what they're doing here. Yeah, I mean, I, your example, the museum, I think, is, is that they used and you talked about is, is really apt because it's like it's like having those headsets when you go to a museum, and, and it, but, it, you know, those just beep, you know, you go to the... That's you know, what the Apple guy said, he, forget headsets. Forget, said, now you have your own headsets. phone, and, and it doesn't matter, you don't have to follow the order, you just go to the thing and it goes... Oh, this picture over here is about X, Y, Z, and so that, like you said, the ability to have product information. You walk up and you go, and you know, or whatever. I want to hear everything in the store. I stand near about uh, that has to do with uh, whatever you're buying. You Play know, a commercial, a commercial for it, or a demo for it. Like, how do I use this yeah. item? Boom. I mean, could you? I mean, that would be incredible to create an app that just basically has 
all it maps YouTube videos that show how to use a particular product to the product. So when you walk sure. up, you go, "How do I use leeks in, a, in 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 my food?" And then boom, it brings up three or four recipes that demo how to use leeks in a particular dish or something I, like. See, that. I, now I had totally decided not to upgrade, and now you blew it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I'm upgrading. I mean, it's. it's I blame I, you. I, well, you guys are nerds. That's different. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I have you know, I have to say that I think that this will, will actually go nowhere initially because I think that, that I think it's a brilliant idea. I think this is probably is very futuristic in the sense of this will we'll see more of this. But I believe initially it, it the the amount of data that needs to be encoded to make that more a common behavior or used, it's just gonna be too small. We'll see a couple like really nice demo pilot things of it. And I think we'll see it kind of fall off, and then things like a lot of things. Things a lot faster now, though, than they used to, like two years ago. I mean, it's amazing how quickly yeah. people adopt these technologies. I, I think it will happen. I just think it, it, there's so much data. If you look at how, how how granular that is, and how much data it would take mm -hmm. to encode and create beacons and that but kind I, of stuff. It's gonna be things at like museums and stuff like that. Somebody like Foursquare will jump on it. The, and, and that's actually what I was thinking is Foursquare, four square, if they could integrate it in there and say, look, whoever doesn't have the iPhone 5S and doesn't have this support, it'll act the same way as it was. it's already acted. But mm -hmm. for those who do have it, we can start mm -hmm. really, really getting focused on this to do things like delivering coupons and, and that sort of thing to people. I mean, I think the coupon stuff is the less sexy part of the whole thing. Um, but but I'm definitely I mean that's part of the reason why I'm I'm buying the phone and and I think one last thing for marketers to think of in this on this story is pay attention to how many iPhone 5s's are sold that will tell you how rapidly this sort of thing will be adopted period that's it did you did you guys see the Jimmy Kimmel thing about where they showed the new iPhone the, S5? with the iPad yeah the iPad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was, this is an iPad Mini and they were going yeah it's a great new phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Now we got to share that in the show notes. There, we, I'll, I'll, I'll try to find it. All right. Well, I this was a really great show on Facebook and new technologies, which we always love to talk about because we're geeks. And uh, I'd like to thank you guys for being on the show. And Adam, why don't you tell people where they can find you? At Secret Sushi uh, or at Hel Adam Hellway, pretty much anywhere online. And follow me on Twitter or say hi on Twitter at Secret Sushi. Okay, and Steve. Uh, you can hit me up at Steveology on Twitter or the Steveology blog. And I'm Janet Fouts. You can find me at JanetFouts.com or JFouts on Twitter. Thanks for watching. We love you all. Remember that you can watch the show live on YouTube. You can watch it on the Friday Hangout. From now on, we'll be having this new feature where we'll be able to take questions directly from the Google Plus page, and we would love for you to come and participate. We love questions. Questions and if you're in the Bay Area, you can come to my house if you bring uh, baked goods and coffee. <laughs> or a tuna casserole. <laughs> no. Baked goods, coffee. You can also find us on Spreaker and on iTunes if you want to listen to our audio podcast. Thanks yeah. very much, and great show, everybody. Take Bye, care. Bye, everybody.